What's up, everybody? Welcome to a new English bit. I'm Gabia, and in today's lesson, we're going to focus on pronunciation. But unlike my previous videos, instead of looking at commonly mispronounced words, today I want to give you eight tips on how to sound more like a native English speaker. Are you ready? So let's dive in. Before we start, just a couple of things. Firstly, as you may know, I'm not a native English speaker, so I'm not saying that my pronunciation is perfect. In fact, I still have to work on it, especially on connected speech and linking, which I'm going to talk about later on. So I want to give you my humble tips because I think they can help you improve your pronunciation. And secondly, I've been teaching English in Spain since 2011, so some of my tips may be aimed at Spanish speakers. So maybe some of my recommendations don't apply to you. With that being said, let's get started. My first tip is to pay attention to the way you pronounce the suffixes T-I-O-N and S-I-O-N. Spanish students tend to pronounce these endings like shan. And here we don't have the sound o, but schwa, which is the most common sound in English. The sound schwa is unstressed, neutral, very quick and lazy. Let's look at some examples. The first one is situation. So we don't say situation, okay, it's not o, it's not e, it's something very quick and it's almost nothing. Situation, situation. Another example, station, station. Two examples with s-i-o-n, decision, decision, or another example, confusion, confusion. Let's move on to the second tip, which is the pronunciation of the ending O-U-S. So here we've got the same situation as in the first tip, and it's the sound schwa. Here we've got the sound. Let's look at some examples. The first one, famous. So we don't say famous, we don't pronounce the sound U but the schwa sound, famous. Another example, nervous, nervous. More examples, tremendous, tremendous. Or one of my favorite words, gorgeous, gorgeous. So remember not to pronounce the sound o. Let's continue. My tip number three is long and short sounds. In English, it's really important to distinguish between long and short sounds, unlike in Spanish, where all the sounds have the same duration. So how can we know if the sound is long or short? Whenever you see two dots next to a symbol, it means that the sound is long. For example, boot. We can see two dots, so it means that u, the sound u, is long. Boot. In English, there are minimal pairs, which means that the meaning of the word changes depending if the sound is long or short. And sometimes there is a huge difference in meaning, so you need to be careful. Let's look at some minimal pairs. The first one is sheep and ship. So long e and short. Another example, sheet and shit. One more, look and look. And the last example, beach. And if the sound is short, the meaning is completely different. So be very, very careful. My tip number four is to pronounce correctly words that start 
with the letter S. So Spanish speakers tend to pronounce these words saying S, the first sound, when it has to be S. For example, Spain. We say Spain, not S Spain. We don't add the sound E. Spain. Another example, Sprite. Sprite, the same. It's not E Sprite. There is no E. It's just S. Sprite. Two more examples. Special. Special. And start. Start. My tip number five is word stress. It means that it's important to stress the correct syllable in the word. How can you know which syllable is stressed? It's very simple. The apostrophe tells you that the next syllable is stressed. So whenever you see an apostrophe, the stress goes after it. My tip number six is learning phonetic symbols that can help you pronounce any word correctly. There is an app by British Council called Phonemic Chart where you can find all the symbols, you can click on them and listen to their pronunciation. Let's continue to more to go. Number seven, sentence stress. Apart from word stress, we also have sentence stress. Unlike in Spanish, where we stress all the words equally, in English, some words are more stressed than others. And we usually stress those words that carry important information. For example, nouns, verbs, adjectives, or adverbs. While articles, prepositions, pronouns, and conjunctions aren't usually stressed because they don't carry important information. For example, I like tea. Here we stress all the words. I like tea. Another example, what's the book about? What's the book about? So in this sentence, we stress what's the question because it's important to find the answer and book. One more example, what happened to your leg? What happened to your leg? We stress what happened and leg. And the last example, how did you know? How did you know? We stress how and know. Okay, last but not least, my tip number eight is connected speech and linking. Native English speakers don't pronounce all the words completely or all the sounds completely. But what happens is that some sounds drop while others can be added or changed. That's why it's much more complicated to understand spoken English than, for example, a text. Because we can have two words that we know, but then they are linked and it seems that we hear a new word and that's why it's so confusing. There are five types of connected speech and today I'm going to cover two. So the first type is catenation. Catenation. It happens when the end of one word blends into another and it sounds like one word. The last sound of the first word has to be consonant and the first sound of the next word has to be vowel. So it's a consonant sound plus a vowel sound. The first example, give it back. We don't say give it back, but we link the first two words. Give it. Give it. And it sounds like one word, give it back. Another example, I like it, I like it. It's not I like it, but altogether, I like it, like it. One more example, I get up late, get up. 
We link get and up. Get up. I get up late. One more example. I got it. Got it. I got it. Another example. The book came out last month. The book came out, came out all together last month. And the last example, it's like a dream. Like a, it's like a dream. And now let's move on to the second type of connected speech and linking, which is assimilation. Assimilation. It happens when two sounds blend together, forming a new sound. So when the last sound of the first word is and the first sound of the next word is y. The new sound is ch. For example, don't you is don't you. Don't you. So we don't say don't you, but we have a new sound, which is ch. Don't you. Another example, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So we don't say meet you, but meet you. So it's like a new word, meet you, with the sound ch. Nice to meet you. More examples, won't you, won't you, or aren't you, aren't you. Or one more example, can't you, can't you. And assimilation can also happen inside the same word. For example, Tuesday, we have the sound T followed by the sound Y. So it's pronounced like Ch, Tuesday. So it's not Tuesday, but Tuesday, Ch, Tuesday. And when we have the sound D followed by the sound Y, the new sound is j. For example, did you is pronounced like did you. Did you. Not did you, but did you. Did you. And some more examples. Would you. Would you. Should you. Should you. Or the last example. Do you. Do you? So guys, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this English bit and it will help you improve your pronunciation. And if you want me to make another video on linking and connected speech, let me know in the comments below. And I would be really grateful if you could give this lesson a huge thumbs up. Remember to subscribe to my channel and catch me on Instagram. With that being said, Thanks for watching and see you next week. Ciao for now!